Um, so something else you mentioned, which is like the advent of streaming services, right? So now you have Netflix putting out a lot of original content. You have Hulu putting out a lot of original content, Amazon Prime. Like everybody's in the game now. And like you said, because me, I don't I don't even have cable. Like mm -hmm. I, well, I have all these streaming services and I watch the shows I want to watch and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't tune in really like in live, you know, to live television unless it's like an award show that I want to laugh at. So, um, <laughs> so with that being said, do you, and you say that, you know, it, it is having an impact on network television. Do you see that this is going to trend towards like maybe um, network television taking a back seat or it being harder to get into the game in network television? How do you view that? I view, you know, right now, I mean, I'm just looking at the numbers right now, this, this, this moment right now. Uh, and what are we in October? The new shows that are that are out right now. No, I think the the Connors Roseanne show did did well last week. Um, they uh, they had high numbers, but everything else has really really low numbers. Like Blackish, you know, three million people watched uh, Blackish last week. It's not a lot of people, right. you know. And so and that's a very popular and very great show. Yeah. And so and then you have. Um, but shows like Fresh Off the Boat, shows like Speechless, what, and shows, some of these shows that most people haven't really heard of, right. you know, unfortunately, because, because if a show doesn't do well, studios and networks don't, don't promote the show. Right. So they just kind of lay there. I do a show called American Housewife, and I don't know, you know, I, I don't know too many people have ever even seen the show. So, um, uh, a show, uh, so I think personally right now, uh, that the networks would do better to do more like reality, game shows, sports, award shows, things like that that you don't really have to pay residual income to directors and writers and actors mm -hmm. and therefore they can do those shows and they make a more family based kind of entertainment, not entertainment but you know like live television and shows that are cheap to do uh, and I think musicals I think they would probably do better that you know to do something like that instead of um, what they're trying to do now because I think they've lost a lot of people. I mean, um, you know, it's and it's hard to figure out. We are such a big country, and we have such a, you know, we're we do, we know nothing. We know people here. We know about the East Coast and the West Coast, but we you know what what do people in the, in the Midwest want to watch? What do mm -hmm. people in the South really want to watch? You know, my in-laws, they live in the South. The last, last time I was down there, they said, you know, they were like, um, are you still working on the Parkers? You know? <laughs> <laughs> because, because their television set stays on BET all day. Right. So they want to see black people on TV. Right. And so it just stays on that channel. So they see my name, <laughs> you know. They, and I go, you blackish? You don't watch? Nope. They don't go to network television. Yeah. The TV does not turn, they do not turn to network television. That's hilarious. The Parkers <laughs> hasn't been on for a good 20 like, years. Yeah. So it's a 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're going to take some questions from the audience. Um, okay. If you want to ask Ken something about the business, about directing, about anything, raise your hands. What's your name? Hi, Sierra. Sierra, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, I, I, I have. Um, is it possible to uh, maintain your creative integrity when trying to go commercial? Because I understand like no one likes to be a starving artist. So mm -hmm. how do you balance like maintaining your creative integrity while also uh, adhering to the red tape that you find when you go into commercial areas like network TV? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. Um, it's very hard. It's very hard because um, when I started off, um, I was super passionate about you know what it should be and what you know what our image should be not really, not really about image but what comedy should be um, and and I soon found <clears throat> because I, I remember early on in my career a producer asked me to do something he goes can you have Bob Saget uh, stand on this side of the door and I was and to me I was like that's stupid I'm not gonna and I just didn't do it but subsequently I wasn't asked back. Because they said, well, we just asked him to move it, but I was so passionate about doing it, I just didn't do it. And so um, what I learned is that, it, right, that, that it's not my show. 
It's not, you know, I'm just, a, I'm hired as a director. It's their show. It's the executive producer show. And, and, it's, and, and directing is not really a, a television. It's a writer's medium. It's not a director's medium. So if you want to, if you want to be creative and do your, you know, really do your own thing, you have to create something. You have to, and then direct it. You know, or or your buddy, or your or your friend who just loves you, lets you go wild, and just or not even your friend. There are some shows that will let you just go, and just do your thing. You know, and you don't have to answer to anybody. I used to do a show called Parenthood. It's a one-hour drama, and a, or comedy drama, and there wasn't a writer on the set, but you, so you could basically, basically, and you could even change the words. You know, because Jason Kadams, who created the show, he said, I don't really care about the words as long as the intention is there and the tone is there and the scene is about what we talk about. So we would have really intense tone meetings to talk about what this show, what the scene was about. And so, therefore, then you went out and you did it. And so that was really a lot of freedom. But in comedy, it, things are so specific and the joke is talked about and worked about works so well that it has there's timing there's intention there's a lot of stuff that's already set up that you really kind of have to follow you know there's room you know like on the office and parks and recreation we used to do what was called a fun run which um, we'd say okay um, we got the scripted version now you guys just say whatever you want and then they would say whatever they want and a lot of times it would be funnier than what was, so you can use bits and pieces of that. But that's not, and I try to do it sometimes on, on different shows, but not everybody has that, that uh, improvisa improvisational skills. They don't have those skills, so they're not good at it. You know? so, um, so I think, um, to answer your question, I think it's, it's, a, it's a balance, and you just, and luckily, um, I bet I'm at the point in my career where I just really work with people that I want to work with. And, um, and who like me and let me do my thing. And it's just a more comfortable um, environment because I feel like I can have freedom and I can suggest things and I can change the, the, the tone and the, and, and the writing. But, um, but at the end of the day, it's the writer's medium. Thank you. Linda? What's your second question? <laughs> well, I will come back. <laughs> <laughs> um, my question was, um, what would you, what was your single best kind of directing experience, and why? And then, conversely, kind of what was your work? Wow. Um, hmm. It's a good question. Uh, I, off the top of my head, I would say um, episode of Thirty Rock. Uh, it was called uh, Queen of Jordan. And basically what we did was, you know, reality shows were really big at the time or the beginning of reality shows. And we did an episode uh, where Sherry Shepard was, uh, yeah, who I love, <laughs> <laughs> Sherry Shepard got her own reality show uh, within the show. And so we did the whole show like a reality show. And so we, we took pieces from uh, Housewives of Atlanta, Housewives of New York, and kind of incorporated all these different elements, you know, like the ridiculousness of you know people throwing wine in each other's face, and, <laughs> and just really kind of blew that whole thing up to really show how, we took it to another level to show how ridiculous it really is. And so I thought that was very challenging, and nobody really knew you know, how to shoot that and, and how to, you know, the vibe of it. And since I had already done The Office, which was like a, a documentary, a mockumentary, um, and we shot it in that style, I kind of knew. So they just kind of gave me free reign. and like, go ahead, you do. We don't, you know, just do your thing. And, uh, and subsequently, it, uh, it became a real big episode, so much that we did another one. We did another one. And, uh, and it was one of the most popular episodes, but we were all just, just having fun. It was totally a different, it wasn't a, like a 30 Rock episode at all. We shot it in videotape as opposed to film. And that was probably uh, my, the, the, the fun, you know. And then also I, you know, um, I had a lot, but there were shows that I had a lot of fun. We have a guy here, uh, Manly, who used to work with me on Scrubs. And that was also another show that we just had a lot of fun and, and it was always a good feeling when you left. And Bernie Mac it was another show that I just loved. That's, that might be one of my favorites, actually. Mm -hmm. Actually, because my, um, 
I hate to be long-winded, but um, the, my first episode of, of, uh, of single camera, because um, I did all these multi-camera shows, and then when single camera kind of came back around with like shows like Malcolm in the Middle, Scrubs, and uh, Bernie Mac show, uh, I got asked to do an episode of Bernie Mac show, which is kind of controversial. We were using the N word in the show, and so they, they, I think they wanted a black director to be, you know, be, you know, be, <laughs> be keep it real, keep it responsible, or whatever. So that was my first episode of a single camera show. So since I had never really shadowed anybody, and I really didn't know, I didn't go to film school. I just had been wor working, you know, learning on the job, so, you know, really. Um, they threw me into this episode, and I just really kind of went at it organically from a very, you know, just organic point of view and shot it. And so that was fun. And then, and actually, they gave me five, four days to do it as opposed to five days. And and you know, for this new director, and I think I did it in three and a half because I was just it was just adrenaline and just you know. But I took a lot of chances there. I took a lot of chances, and and so that was a lot of fun also. And working with a great guy like Bernie Mac I mean it was it was just wonderful so